Sigma Tiger News here with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Dead Messenger. Pff, what's that? A ghost? O'Keefe's Juicy Beef, Sweet and Sour Killer, and Drug Free Emergency. What? Party's over! Sigma Tiger here with you in 4K, five days a week. What are we talking about? We got a dead messenger. Let's hit it. Let's go. What do we got? The messenger shuts down less than a year after launching news site, Titanic of Publishing Disasters. Okay, so uh, there's this guy who I guess was some sort of media magnet or something like this, and he gets uh, investments upwards to $50 million to open this uh, publication, this media site, and uh, what happened? Well, he overpaid everybody. Everyone got a big fat slice, and he just thought the advertisement would come in, the interest was there. I mean, everyone loves the news. Look at the tiger here. His community is exploding, and I have zero overhead. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right in to see what's going on here. Money Bleeding Startup, the messenger, the news site launched. Um, The new site launched to great fanfare last May, shut down after less than a year. Likened to the Titanic, the startup was scrubbed of all articles Wednesday evening, hours after an insider at the publication told the Post, the site will go dark. And boom, there it is. The soothsayer was true. None of the roughly 300 staffers will get severance, the source added. The site's homepage was blank, aside from the message info at themessenger.com. A rep for the messenger did not comment. Co-founder and CEO Jimmy Finkelstein, who raised $50 million to launch the site, had been scrambling to secure funding this week as employees braced to hear whether the company would avert disaster, as the Post previously reported. This will go down as one of the biggest busts of all time, a media expert said. The messenger will be remembered as the Titanic of publishing disasters. Finkelstein had big dreams of turning the messenger to a major centrist news outlet, uh, meaning that it would be unbiased, you know, not center or sorry, not left-leaning or right-leaning, more center, centric. It would include hiring around 550 journalists within a year and compete with the likes of the LA Times. Here's an image of Finkelstein. He paid top dollar to lure away talent from major publications, including The Post, Politico, and NBC News, and paid the site's editor, Dan Wakeford, around $900,000. <clears throat> What ultimately killed the messenger was the lack of a message and arrogance, the industry source said. Hundreds of people left great jobs with the promise of creating something better, which turned out to be a big lie. Another insider merely added, uh, it's shocking how bad Jimmy handled this. Perhaps he just wasn't there. He was just trying to ride that wave that eventually crashed. Earlier this month, a group of conservative media and business executives led by Omid Malik, or Malik, sorry, uh, a financier who backed Tucker Carlson's new media venture had reportedly proposed $30 million for a 51% stake in the news site, putting its valuation at $60 million. Tough pill to swallow when you took in 50. And now you have to sell over half of it for 30. Recent months, the site's journalists chafed over Finkelstein's close relationship with Donald Trump, questioning a directive from editors to take down stories on the former president's civil fraud trial in New York, so not to overwhelm the homepage. Making matters worse, Wakeford, a former editor-in-chief at People, was reportedly MIA on many occasions and left bigger editorial decisions up to Finkelstein. There you have it. Paying $900,000 for someone who doesn't come to work. Great. That's a recipe for disaster. Check this one out. Transgender Colorado teenager who plotted mass shooting at three schools and a church is jailed for six years after cops found detailed plans and a communist manifesto. So a lot of people are like, okay, well... What's going on here? It's usually a straight white male that shoots up a, uh, a school. Well, what's going on? This this is Lily uh, Whitworth, 19. She plotted to shoot up three schools, churches, police station, and drew up a 30-person kill list. Charged under her birth name, William, or, uh, or dead name, as it would be referenced in uh, the transgender community. 
wrote a worrying four-page manifesto and a schizophrenic rants and planned to buy an AR-15. So just in the preliminary stages of the planning here, excellent. And how did they catch the individual? Whitworth was charged with two counts of attempted murder last April, but confessed to second-degree assault under a plea bargain. Arrested March 31st last year when police called to her home by a family member who said she punched holes in the walls and was ranting about shooting up schools. So a desperate plea for help. And uh, we pray that she gets it. So she'll be locked away for uh, less than six years, I imagine. Interesting to note here. There were numerous containers filled with half-eaten food with mold growing inside numerous alcoholic beverage containers lying around the house. So, uh, not so nice. There was a uh, trash piled up beside her bed, so high that it was level with it. There was a hole in the wall beside the bed, and the sheets on the bed that were supposed to be white were stained brown. Well, it sounds like her environment, uh, she's a product of that, uh, living in squalor, and uh, zero respect for herself or her dwelling, uh, thus resulting in mental illness. East Palestine resident says she sees right through the upcoming Biden visit. Uh, it's an election year. We covered the toxic bomb train uh, yesterday on our show and basically uh, showed the map where it goes up through uh, the Gulf of Mexico, through Middle America, just to the uh, northeast and many, many cities, of course, along the train tracks. They were developed 100 years ago, more, obviously more but not going to say hundreds. Anyway, uh, so their cities built around them, of course, and there weren't chemicals back then. There might have been coal and then oil, but now there's like uh, chemicals that are odorless but can kill you instantly if exposed. Well, East Palestine, it happened there last year. Uh, toxic train derailment. Here's an image. Uh, well, basically, they kind of hush-hushed it, and the media didn't really cover it until uh, all of the people from the city were like, hey, there's a lot going on. Of course, the internet helped to show it. And uh, DJ Wokely warned that Americans have seen right through Biden's ploy during Fox & Friends, given that the 2024 is a presidential election year. His visit comes as the community grows, continues to reel from catastrophe, catastrophe that happened one year ago. Yeah, Biden didn't show up. Everyone was hush-hush, the media, and then they tried to downplay it, that it wasn't really such a big deal, and then this vinyl chloride cloud just overtakes the city, and they're like, oh yeah, water's cold. The company goes in, tries to like get everyone to sign a, sign over their, uh, their deal, take a compensation package, so then you can't sue us later. And uh, a few people took it, and then uh, obviously everyone was like, don't do it, it's a terrible idea. And the president kind of didn't show up. Where was he? He wasn't anywhere. He didn't do a lot. He's, I think he is the most vacationed president of all time, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, basically, Biden is going there to try and get some votes. It's unfortunate. He should have showed up right away. He should have been there with an American hat on, handing out bottles of water and gas masks and saying, there's buses here, we're going to bus you out of here, we're going to take you down to the uh, the military bases and keep you fed and warm, we're going to do all the tests we need to do to make sure you're healthy. And then, you know what those people would have done? Voted for you. You don't have to go there now and try and get through a sentence. All right, Riker's rape case shows female prisoners are the voiceless victims of gender ideology. So if you're unaware, uh, there are... Uh, a bunch of transgender females, biological males, that are in prison. And they're choosing to um, get transferred to all female prisons. In some states, they're allowing it, others, they're not, of course. So, you know, what's the problem with that? If they identify with a woman, or as a woman, sorry and uh, they would want to be around who they feel comfortable with because maybe they don't feel comfortable around the men because everyone knows what goes on in prison, okay? Only gay when I stay type of stuff, right? You know. Anyway, uh, so, so maybe they, that's how they feel. Maybe they're like, okay, it's really dangerous for me. Like, I, I actually am a woman. I feel like a woman. I dress like a woman. I am a woman. 
and uh, all these men are around me and it's you know it's pretty crazy in here i don't feel comfortable at all it's not good i would rather be with women yeah sure like okay if it's all legit and all of it adds up then yeah maybe like you know but the truth is is that a lot of these individuals some uh, many reported cases as soon as they were allowed as soon as this was allowed they were actually transitioning immediately saying okay i'm going down to the minimum security woman's uh, facility and there's been a whole bunch of uh, dirty, rotten, nasty things going on. Let's go ahead and have a look. The first flashpoints to erupt in the gender wars have involved activists awakening a sleeping giant. Millions of parents across the political spectrum. Mostly thanks to outraged parents, the resistance against gender ideology scored its first major victories in 2023. States passed dozens of laws prohibiting sex, secret, sorry, gender support plans, uh, protecting women's sports or restricting gender drugs and surgery on kids. There are, are as yet no such victories for another class of victims who lack a natural political constituency to protect them, female prisoners. There have been thousands of stories in the last two years of schools that socially transition kids behind their parents' backs, males joining female uh, sports teams, and teens harmed by gender-affirming drugs and surgeries. Thank God this disturbing trend is being spotlighted. Absolutely. Uh, everything needs to be spotlighted, you know, especially when it's a... A phenomenon that seems to be trending you know what I mean and it's also secretive like what's going on here like why are you being secretive do you know that there's something wrong about this like do you know people are gonna be upset are you trying to keep it a secret so you don't have to deal with conflict or are you trying to actually protect some somebody what's happening here that's what we're all trying to figure out and that's why you need to talk about it conflict only happens when you don't communicate so this, uh, this uh, author states the media should pay more attention to the plight of women behind bars. Potentially, yeah. The latest such victim is revealed in a lawsuit just filed against the New York Department of Corrections. The anonymous plaintiff Rose Doe, a former female prisoner in Rikers, Rose M. Singer's women's jail, says she was groped and raped by a male prisoner in 2022. The suit alleges the perpetrator told a prison mate he claimed to be trans just so he could gain access to women, as I allegedly said. But again, this is hearsay. This is third person. Uh, we have no idea who said it. Told a prison mate. That's hearsay. Uh, unless they're going to come out and say it was me. They told me. Uh, and they're credible. Are they getting a reduction in time for saying it? What's happening here? As is common in these cases, the perpetrator allegedly racked up enough offenses to provide fair warning of what was to come. Okay, so was he a rapist? You know, what was he in jail for? Two female guards are also named as defendants for ignoring complaints about the male prisoner in question. No doubt, given these details, some will propose a Solomonic solution. Authorities should ensure only true trans men enjoy the company of women prisoners and weed out the cynical sex-starved fakers. Such a policy may seem clever, but it's bound to fail. According to gender ideology, a person might be born in the wrong body and so be assigned male at birth but identify as a female. Hence, the only criterion for determining a person's gender identity for orthodoxy is to ask. There's no blood test, brain scan, or infallible battery of questions that could allow a prison doctor to separate the trans wheat from the cheater chaff. If a man says he identifies as woman, that's enough. No extra verification is needed. And therein lies the issue. And maybe there should be a battery of questions developed by uh, psychologists. There should be a round table and they should uh, discuss and argue and learn to have patience and lower their voices and literally educate themselves as much as possible about what's going on with these humans and their behavior and what could be done to make them more comfortable in life. And not only them, but everyone. You know, like... No one should suffer for someone else unless it's by choice, and that's called love. For too long, we've allowed ourselves to be gaslighted into conceding what we all know. Out of misplaced compassion and confusion, we avoid affirming the real observable biological difference between males and females. So they're saying misplaced compassion and confusion. Interesting. Instead, we talk about gender diversity, natal males and gender identities, and sex assigned at birth. We should have compassion for anyone so distressed that he or she wants a whole new body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we should show uh, compassion and understanding and uh, listen to them without suggestion, without uh, influence or, or coercion. We should literally just sit and listen and let them talk and talk and talk until they reveal all the traumatic things in their life and then say, okay, 
would you like a hug? Is that okay? Like, is that something you're comfortable with? Like, after expressing all those feelings, would you like a hug? And then talk to them some more. And then allow them to keep talking. Allow them to talk and talk and talk. No suggestion ever at all about anything. Well, maybe this and, and maybe that. I feel this, I feel that. You feel nothing. You should literally just listen and focus on them and not ask any leading questions. And again, allow them to reveal any trauma that's occurred. Because all the mental illness is based off of trauma. Whether someone stole your ice cream uh, when you were a child, or your lunch money over and over and over again. Or perhaps you had terrible parents who were evil and had evil spirits. Perhaps they were alcoholic or drug abusers and you had to witness that as a child. The innocence taken away. Well, that precisely is the kind of trauma that causes mental illness. Okay? Sometimes it's a little thing. Sometimes maybe the parents were like too nice to them and let their parent and let their child be a, a friend and a peer as opposed to a uh, a subordinate because the child should be a subordinate they should know right from wrong and they should know that there is an authority or else they're not gonna understand real life because guess what when you get out there it's all about authority and some people want to be the authority and they'll do anything they can to get there okay you might not be that person you might enjoy being a comfortable subordinate as long as it's not uh, taking away all your rights and freedoms we know that men on average larger, stronger, and more violent than women. Yeah, that's a fact. We know that men commit almost all rapes. Again, a fact based off of physicality and the anatomy. Okay? Female have uh, a receptacle and males have, um, what would you call it? Something that goes inside of something. Because of these differences, common sense dictates boys and girls should have separate bathrooms. We know this when it comes to Stuyvesant Brooklyn Technical High School and Dalton, whatever their misguided policies may be, and even though most male high schoolers aren't rapists. And uh, we were talking about Loden County there uh, the other day. I couldn't remember it, but uh, they had a whole bunch of issues with a... Uh, a trans female uh, sharing a bathroom and then assaulting a female and then the school board keeping it hush hush and then the student moving to another school and potentially doing it again and a whole bunch of issues coming out of that so why do we accommodate such men who uh, we should not subject women prisoners to the same risk so absolutely like the truth is is that there sh there needs to be more discussion about it there needs to be looked at it shouldn't just be accepted and say okay okay feelings you know let's just allow all this to happen drag shows and whoever wants to be whatever they want to be to be make sure you affirm because it could hurt feelings well guess what like the affirmation uh could crush the person you know like it's like popularity i've seen in my life, uh, especially like junior high and high school, uh, you know, the tiger was a little bit of a popular guy, played sports, had lots of friends, dated, you know, I wasn't the most popular, but I was in the uh, circles. And I would see people come into these circles who uh, were not even close to them before. Okay, they were squares, let's say. Uh, people who were involved in many different things for whatever different reasons. And they would enter this new circle uh, herded in and they would change okay just like uh, you take a feral pig and bring it into the farm and you'll see a change and vice versa you take a little pink piggy and take it off the farm and put it out in the forest you know what happens to that thing it starts to grow hair and tusks it completely changes well it's kind of like the same thing with a teenage girl entering a circle of uh, popular girls I've Look at the movie Mean Girls. I mean, there it is. It's real. Life imitating art or art imitating life. Guess what? Teen sentenced to five years in killing over sweet and sour sauce. I mean, how good is that stuff? This is a tragedy all around and it just doesn't make sense. Absolutely. <laughs> Insanity. The fight started between childhood friends over a packet of sweet and sour sauce outside of McDonald's. It ended with a stabbing that left one 16-year-old girl dead. 
Months later, the teen convicted in the 2023 killing in Washington has been sentenced to nearly five years in the secure custody of the district youth services until she turns 21. And there you go. Previous article states that males are more violent. And here we have a woman stabbing her friend, childhood friend, over a packet of sauce. What does the world come to? What do they put in that stuff? The death of 16-year-old uh, Naima Ligon of Waldorf, Maryland, garnered international headlines after police detailed the motive behind the August 27th stabbing. Tragedy all around. It just doesn't make sense. This is really all over sweet and sour sauce, Judge Andrea L. Hertzfeld said Wednesday as she outlined the details of how someone gutted and stabbed the heart of her very own friend. Ligon's parents said and sat in the courtroom as the 16-year-old received the maximum sentence, both wiping away tears as each spoke of their daughter. Ligon's mother, Joy, described how she could not understand how another teen girl, someone her daughter had known since grade school, could fatally stab her daughter. Joy Ligon said she was constantly reminded about the case while trying to mourn her daughter. Even when she took a brief trip to Jamaica to grieve, she was told by people there that they had heard of the tragic case. And God bless her and God rest her soul of her daughter. Absolutely tragic. And uh, hopefully the other child uh, learns. But uh, it's unlikely where she's going. I still don't understand how someone who called herself a friend could do something so heinous. Absolutely uh, the proceedings are not open to the public, so uh, we don't know exactly what happened in there. The team was charged with first-degree murder in December, and uh, she went ahead and pled down, I'm assuming. Her daughter had missed curfew, turned off her cell phone, disabled the location finder. Wow, so her child was trying to stay out. Perhaps it was over something more than uh, the sauce. All right, so here we go. This is the uh, the beef. This is the juicy beef we want. Ligon, her attacker, and three other friends had attended a late night party together before heading to McDonald's at 14th and U Streets in Northwest Washington. The teens went inside the McDonald's and ordered food. When they returned to their vehicle, the defendant and another girl began arguing over sweet and sour sauce. The defendant snatched one of the sauce containers from the other girl, Gaines said, and the dispute continued outside the vehicle. At one point, the defendant jokingly called the other girl a bitch, her attorney said at the hearing. Her attorney said the teen was surprised that the girls reacted in anger and did not take the word as a joke as they had done previously when they used the word and instead tried to fight her. I wonder what the toxicology report states. Uh, Gaines said Ligon stood between the defendant and the other girl, trying to keep them apart. As the defendant swung at the other girl, she struck Ligon. Gaines said Ligon and the other girl then began fighting with the defendant. Okay, there you have it. Minutes later, after the fighting ended, Gaines said the defendant took out a folding knife, grabbed Ligon by her right arm, swung her around to face her, and then stabbed Ligon in her abdomen. Ligon was returning to the vehicle. That was the kill shot, Gaines said. Police uh, have said the knife was seven and a half inches long. Unbelievable. 40 second video of the fight and fatal knife attack. Of course they were filming it and no one else was helping or saying, hey, put that down. Stop that. I'm so sorry if I could go back and change what happened, I would because you're going to jail. And uh, good luck with that. Well, guess what? We covered syphilis, uh, just getting all up in everyone's grill uh gonorrhea is down so how about the state of stds where is it happening 2.5 million cases of infections in 2022 alarmingly increase in syphilis again like the one that if you have it you can go crazy so that's not the one you want rate of chlamydia cases largely held steady Blah, blah. So where is it? Arizona. Number 10, Arizona. Arkansas. North Carolina. Alabama. South Carolina. Georgia. Alaska. Interesting. South Dakota. Louisiana. And Mississippi. Sounds like it is actually the dirty South. Boom! Oregon decriminalizes drugs in 2020. Interesting experiment there. I believe Portugal had done something similar. Uh, but now officials are declaring a fentanyl state of emergency. So the party's over. Everyone's freaking out. Fentanyl is, is everywhere. They're putting it all up in every drug. People are dying. 
The governor of Oregon has declared an emergency in the city of Portland a few years after the state became the first in the nation to largely decriminalize drug use. Pave the way is the first state to decriminalize drug use, passing Measure 110 in 2020. Instead of incarcerating drug users, the measure focused on addiction and recovery. I believe the same thing is happening in uh, British Columbia, Canada. Not going well there either. I believe overdoses are uh, increasing exponentially. We've had three years of this law that has not delivered on the promise that voters thought they were getting. The hope was that a more humane approach would help curb addiction in the state. Yeah, I think if it was like marijuana or, you know, maybe cocaine or crack, because there's a certain level of people that'll do certain things like that. And uh, heroin, intravenous drugs, again. But this fentanyl stuff, apparently, it is just like... Uh, taking over you know it's too potent and it's too addictive and it's cheap so when the people get hooked the ones that could pull themselves up and out of the darkness are literally anchored to the bottom of fentanyl wheelock said that she hopes the emergency will fix the current crisis though she added that the government magic wand or 90-day plan will fix the crisis absolutely not the only thing that'll fix the crisis is closing the border you know how about that preventing drugs from entering the country in the first place. It's not manufactured here. It's manufactured in China and coming through Mexico. What do you know? McDonald's location in Connecticut slammed over outrageous Egg McMuffin price. How much would you pay for an English muffin, a fried egg, potentially bacon, or a sausage? How much? You know, like, how much would it cost to make one on your own? If you're going to buy like a bag of a half dozen McMuffins or English muffins and some sausages. Well, for the price of this, you could probably buy all the ingredients and eat one every morning. All you got to do is have a frying pan and a way to heat it up. A McDonald's outpost, outpost in Connecticut is being slammed for its outrageous pricing after customers charge more than $7 for an egg McMuffin and nearly $6 for a side of hash browns. There you go. $7.29 for one McDonald's egg McMuffin. What has the world come to? New York-based Bespoke Investment Group brought an X of the breakfast sandwich, also posing a photo of the stiff bill. The receipt showed that on Saturday, the user spent fourteen fifty-eight on two Egg McMuffins at a McDonald's in Fairfield, Connecticut, located at a rest stop off Interstate 95. So they may be charging a premium based off the location. Uh, these were two for $2 pretty recently. Yeah, what happened to that dollar menu? You know, like uh, last time I seen, not that I eat this trash, uh, the tiger only eats beef, the hottest and juiciest forms of it. And guess what? McDonald's ain't hot. It ain't juicy. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's not real. You can go online and type in like 20-year-old McDonald's hamburger. And guess what? It still looks almost exactly the same. So, yeah, I remember when a combo was like $5.50 Canadian. Big Mac combo. Quarter pound or two, those were like the money burgers. Anything less than that, the McChickens, they were like four ninety nine, maybe something like that, four fifty. Cheeseburgers, seventy nine cents, and then up to like a dollar thirty nine. That's my era. All right, guess what? A Big Mac then was five fifty, and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Now a Big Mac is like ten dollars. So what's going on? This stuff is absolute poison. Does it cost too much to spray this stuff and to create it in the lab? McDonald's in New York City notoriously pricey Times Square hash browns are $3.99. Egg McMuffin uh, set hungry patrons back $5.49. There you go, for a McMuffin. They unveiled three-tiered value menu, dollar, two dollar, three dollar menu. There's the tiers. Uh, sausage biscuit, sausage McMuffin, and a McChicken sandwich. So the McChicken is down there with just an egg sandwich. And uh a sausage sandwich or no no egg sausage McMuffin so would that have yeah no half okay there you go one bacon and egg cheese McGriddle two egg McMuffins so the cheese McGriddle no bacon 719 so there you go for three things that would maybe fill you up or share with a uh, your wife $23 for breakfast so go ahead and get some more of that trash and pile it in. James O'Keefe with the Juicy Beef. You don't know who this guy is? 
Well, he used to uh, run Veritas, uh, which was like a media group, and now he has OMG, the O'Keefe Media Group, because uh, he was ousted by the board for being way too juicy. Well, guess what? He's coming with the hot juice right now, and he dresses up incognito, and he does interviews with people, and he asks some questions. Hot take, gorilla, muck raking. So let's have a look. Breaking video, top White House cyber official tells O'Keefe in disguise they can't say it publicly. The White House wants to replace Kamala Harris and confirms President Biden. Mental decline. Biden is definitely slowing down. I'm just telling you what I've heard. They're really concerned about it. These are all taken out of context, okay? These are all quoted with uh, space dots. So go ahead. I think they need to get rid of him or her. But no one in modern history has ever said, like, we're not going to renominate the president for a second term. Of course, like you have to. He's he's the leader. Charlie Krager, at Charlie Krager, a cybersecurity policy analyst and foreign affairs desk officer in the executive office at the White House, tells O'Keefe, I had a meeting with Michelle Obama. Someone asked her, will you ever run for office? And she said, no, emphatically. She was like, I've seen all this shit my husband has had to go through, and that does not interest me. There you go. She's not interested at all. Kamala Harris hemorrhages black staff. She can't keep black staff. They quit on her en masse, meaning like a lot at the same time. She will be the vice president nominee. There was a debate about removing her from the ticket, but sadly they didn't. She's not popular, but you can't remove the first black lady to be vice president from the GD presidential ticket. Like, what kind of message are you going to send to, like, African-American voters? People would be like, what the F? Like, she's a woman, and she's multiracial. And there's the individual right here, just giving it to him. And here's James O'Keefe dressed up in glasses on. Clark Kent, basically. You know, it's that easy. It truly is. If you were always wondering, how did Superman get away with it? Well, you know, he's not dealing with, like, geniuses here. He's dealing with the general population. And guess what? You can fool them with glasses and a sweater vest. Guess what? TikTok on the clock. We've been covering it. What time is it? Probably 11.51 now. U.S. warship had close call with Houthi missile in the Red Sea. If you don't know, the Houthi are a Iranian-backed group of Islamic militants in Yemen. Iran is also uh, kind of bombing uh, Pakistan militants as well, and they've sent a few back, and they're all like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, and they're all like, nothing. So they're all trying to avoid war, but they're all like tickling each other. And then you got uh, Lebanon and the Hezbollah, also backed by Iran, and they've been using rocket-propelled propelled missiles right? And drones. They also had, uh, in Jordan, uh, a drone was coming back just at the same time as an enemy drone was coming in. And they were all like, oh, what's going on? Is that what ours are? And then boom, three soldiers dead. So well done there on the technology front. Uh, should have like a sensor in there being like, boop, boop. Whoa, that one there's got our tracking device. This one doesn't. So how about we shoot it down? Anyway, uh, the Houthis went ahead and shot a missile at uh, the uh, warship, going ahead and taking it to 1150. We are 1151, perhaps, nine minutes away from World War III, so stay tuned. Sigma Tiger News, always delivering the hottest, juiciest beef on the planet, okay? And if you want to know what's going on with the financials, go ahead and check at Sigma Tiger Trade, because we're talking about what's going on with uh, Bitcoin, what's going on with stocks you know they were up all-time high on the spoos the uh sp500 what's going over it's rolling over bitcoin you know what's happening there like do we have a green month last month are we rolling over anyway check it out at sigma tiger trade sigma tiger signing off